It's about that time again, folks. Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. It's time for Quick Queries number 16, where I answer questions about Microsoft Access that may or may not need a whole video of themselves. All right, let's get to it. First up, a question from George about my driving directions video. He wants to know if there's a way to get the shortest path between multiple locations. Remember in this video, I show you how to make a little map where you can send it three, four, five different addresses and it will draw you a, you know, a map with directions between them. All right, this guy, a little map here. Okay. Now, as far as getting the shortest path between them, yeah, there's algorithms out there. Um, it's called the traveling salesman problem, and that's a whole different level of computer science beyond what I'm going to cover in a tech help video. Um, I, I did some work on this years and years ago uh, with a C program with longitude and latitude, but uh, it was pretty complex. So if you guys are interested and want to see more on this topic, let me know. Post a comment down below. And of course, if enough of you are interested, I'll dig deeper into it. And of course, if you guys have some resources for dealing with the traveling salesman problem, let me know and I'll look into those too. Next up, S. Southcomb mentioned that the Google API that generates QR codes doesn't seem to be working. It works for me a lot of the time, but not all the time. In fact, here's the page that I just brought up a second ago and I've got this automatically set up on my website. So it shows the URL down here, the picture, and then right down here is my little image for the Google QR code API. So yeah, it's not working all the time. It does work sometimes. I noticed it was working last night when I did this. When I posted this response, I uh, I checked it and it was working. Now, if you've got it so that, you know, these QR codes are business critical for you, there are other paid services available. If you do a Google search, you'll find some that can make, you know, QR codes that are very reliable. Google, it's up, it works sometimes, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I, I can't control that. But uh, if you guys are really interested, if, if any of you have a source that you use for online QR code generation, post a comment down below. It'll be interesting to see what you have. Got an email earlier today from one of my students, David. He said, uh, I wonder if it's possible to run an access database from a CDR or DVDR. Uh, I don't believe it's possible. I haven't tested this in a while. I got a DVR drive somewhere in my garage. I just, I, I haven't. I don't know where it is. I don't feel like going to get it, but I don't believe it's going to work. I remember trying this years ago and it doesn't work. See, an access database needs read write access permission to whatever folder it's in. It's got to create that lock file, right? That ACCDL file, right? And, or ACCDBL, whatever, whatever the extensions are. Um, that lock file. If it can't create the lock file, you're not going to be able to run the database. And of course, you know, it goes without saying that. The users won't be able to, you know, make any changes if it's on a CD or if it's in a, a read-only drive. And I'm pretty sure that with a CDR and DVDR, they don't read-write like our normal file system does. So I don't know. Give it a try. Tell, let me know if it, if it works. I remember trying this years ago when I still used to ship my courses on CD. I remember trying putting an access database on there and it wouldn't load. But who knows? They might have changed it in the last 20 years. But uh, I don't think it will work. But this is one of those try it and see things, right? All right, got a whole video on this one. Before asking me, try it. Give it a shot. See if it works. All right, take a few minutes rather than waiting for a response from me. <laughs> or post it in my forums. My guys are a lot faster than I am at answering questions. And, yep, still not working. Next up is a great tip from one of my moderators, Kevin Robertson. I, I love Kevin. He always has these great ideas, these great tips, and stuff that I never heard of. It's like if you're working in the VBA editor and you want to just show one procedure, you know, one sub or one function, there's a little button down here. Now, there's a ton of little buttons all over Access that I've never even looked at, right? What is this witchcraft devilry? <laughs> I've never even seen this before, all right? If you're in the VBA editor, it's right down here. This little guy right there. Look at that. Why you click right here? Click watch. Boom. That's all you see now. And this is great if you've got like, you know, a, a tons and tons of code in one procedure one sub that you want to just not be distracted by everything else but don't forget that you got that turned on though because then you might forget oh where's that where'd that function go but that's a cool tip they sneak a lot of things in like i started working with access way back in version two which was like 1994 i think 
Uh, never used Access 1.0, but version 2 is the one I started with. And, uh, you know, obviously over the years, they, they've added stuff, added stuff, added stuff. So people come up to me. Like, when they first added layout views and forms, right, I was like, what is this, right? Layout view? Never heard of it before. <laughs> of course, I still don't like layout view, but that's a different topic altogether. <laughs> but thanks, Kevin. Here's another question from the forums on my website. Lots of good stuff on my forums, folks. If you guys haven't visited my website, check it out. Uh, from Samantha. She wants to know if you've got like city and state, right? And there's only one city in that state from the list of valid options. Maybe you're doing cascading combo boxes, right? If there's only one option for that state, can you have the, the city automatically filled in? There's a couple ways you can do it. One of my moderators, Adam, said you can put this in the after update event, right? Count the number of items. And if there's only one, just set the value of city field equal to that, right? Kevin Yip, another contributor said you can check the list count property. And again, ignore this little pop-up here. I hate that. Oh, is it a hide menu option? What? Oh, look at that. Hide menu for this site. or all, let's, hide, let's hide it from my site. There we go. Because I like to double click on stuff and show things in videos. Um, but yeah, there's multiple ways to do it. Check these out. I will put a link to this select if only one discussion thread in the links section down below. And thanks for Adam and Kevin for your suggestions. Here's another tip from Kevin. He said that he created a set of combo boxes, right? You got month and year. And based on the data in the table, it won't let you go back before a particular date. So, for example, if March 2024 was the earliest record, you can't pick something less than that. And here is a sample of what he means. And here's his code. He put all his code online here. I'll zoom in so you guys can see it. There you go. Again, I'll put a link to this one down below. I've actually had something like this on my tech help list for a while, so I might do a video on this one, but I wanted to share Kevin's solution first. Here's a tip from Jeffrey in my forums, following up to my hide access videos where I teach you how to make it look like you're not using access. Uh, he also mentions whenever you use a message box in the code, it's an optional parameter, but make sure you specify a title, otherwise it'll say Microsoft Access every time you do a message box. So that's a good point. Keep that one in mind. Next up is a question about a bug that one of my moderators, Adam, brought up in the forum a little while ago. And he's having some problems with the new Aptos font. Displaying kind of weird. I guess that didn't zoom in too much better there for you. But he's, you know, it's supposed to say logged in as, and it's just a little bit of a, you know, it's missing stuff. And uh, I did a little Google searchy search, and the guys over at Access Forever noted this a little while back. And uh, it's been fixed in the latest version, 2309. So if you're having a problem with the new Aptos font, well, I'll put a link to this down below. You can check it out. And thanks to the guys over at Access Forever for catching that one. Next up is a really good question from one of my students, Clay. And he basically said he's got a table that has people in it, right? And he wants to be able to track who a person's siblings are. And that's done with a self-join relationship, which I've covered before in detail. In fact, here it is. And, and look, 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 the QR code's working again. It's, it's hit or miss whether it works or not. Right? Now, my self-join relationship, we talk about genealogy, and you can make a table of people, and the people can be linked to other people so you can track relationships, right? Uh, you know, father to, to daughter and mother and, and, and siblings, right? So Clay wants to track people, so we've got siblings basically a person table, okay? And he wants to say that, okay, I know what the, you know, the relationship between the people is. I want to also track who has power of attorney for whom because some of the siblings have power of attorney over other ones. And so I wanted to bring this up because this just shows you how when you have a many-to-many -many relationship, okay, you can use the junction table to track information about the relationship itself. So in this table, you could put in here what their relationship is, right? Uh, you know, a parent to child, that kind of thing. But you can also track other information, for example, whether they have power of attorney or not. And that would just be another field in that junction table, right? The junction ID, which is their primary key, person one, person two, both of their person IDs. All right, and then any other information that you want to track about this relationship will go in the junction table. So here's some examples, right? Your junction table will then have records like this. 
one, two, true. That's John and Jane, and tr true for the power of attorney, and so on. Right? Two, three, which would be Jane and Sarah, and then false for no power of attorney. And you can put any other information in there about that relationship. So, you know, the date that the relationship was made. Let's say that the relationship is married, right? And you could put, you know, the two spouses in there and then the date of their marriage. And that would go in the junction table. It's information about the relationship. Okay? So that's how that would, that's how I would do that. And that's many to many relationships are, are tricky in and of themselves. But just keep in mind that the junction table can be where you put information about the relationship. And of course, I got a nice big long video on many to many relationships and the barcode's not working again. So sorry. <laughs> this one comes up in the forums from time to time. Um, this one, Stephen asks, uh, how do you center the table name on top of the table? And he shows a picture like this. Um, this has nothing, you have no control over this. This is, I think, more of a Windows thing than an access thing. For example, I got the latest version of Access running on the latest version of Windows 11. That's what I use for recording my videos right now. I try to stay up to date, um, and it's all left aligned. Every application is left aligned in Microsoft Office. Same thing. You open up Word or Excel, they're all left aligned. Now, here's a database I open up on one of my other machines here in the office. It still has Windows 10 on it, and you can see that the title across the top is now centered in the window. Okay, same version of Office. I had the same version of Office on all my machines, but this machine's still running Windows 10. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's more of a Windows thing than an Office thing. And no, you have no control over this application title. So, and your forms and tables and stuff are going to be the same way. So, sorry. I, there might be a registry hack or something out there you can do, but I really haven't taken too much time to look into it. And honestly, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So... <laughs> If you've got a solution, post it in the comments down below. This is one of those questions that gets recycled a lot because I, I get asked this all the time. How do you get access for free? Um, there isn't a free version of access available. The best you can do is get a 30-day free trial. Um, it's not expensive, though, folks. It, you can get it in a, a Microsoft Office subscription. I think I pay like $8 a month. It's not expensive at all. And, of course, if you're developing it for your business and you've got multiple people, only one person needs a paid version of Access because you can use the runtime for everybody else who doesn't need to actually develop the database. So for details on that, check this video out. All right, well, that's going to do it for another edition of Quick Queries. Hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access, 
and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond Sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a Sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.